A Kenyan lady was working in a foreign country. All was going well until something happened that landed her in jail and ended up being deported back to Kenya. Here is the extraordinary story of the ordeals of Lavenda Irene in a prison in a foreign country. My name is Kingori Wangeshi. Stay tuned. Lavenda Irene is a young, jovial Kenyan lady in her mid-twenties. She had just completed high school and Lavenda joined college, but dropped out as a result of lack of school fees. She decided to try her luck in a foreign country in 2020, but this time round as a worker. Previously I was in a college, but due to fee, uh, because my mom is a single mother, due to fee, uh, I decided just to travel because I have other siblings behind me mm -hmm. who are looking up to me. Yeah, that's why I decided to go because I had Egypt has a better pay than uh, Kenya. Her initial experience in Egypt was the cold weather she had not experienced in Kenya. It was the first time she was experiencing temperatures below zero. Around this time, COVID hit Africa and many countries applied the protocols to prevent the spread of the virus. She was first hosted by a cousin in Egypt who oriented her on life in Egypt. I finally got some job that uh, around April 4th, I can remember very well. There's this agent uh, we went to because when you are, you are looking for work, uh, you're being taken by an agent. You go to the agent, you leave your details, you leave your your passport uh, photocopy, your passport photocopy, and then uh, they take you to work. So there's this agent. Uh, he stays in Catholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we went that day, and uh, the family has to pick you first because uh, because it was during Corona. So we just had to do a video call. The first family that took me, uh, I worked with them for some quite a, a time, but uh, the work wasn't favorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's when I left. And it was not favorable because she was given responsibilities she had not signed up for. Her boss discovered that Lavenda was new in Egypt, so she tried to take advantage of her naivety. That's when she took advantage of that fact. So she had to call my cousin and demand for my original passport. But uh, I had it against the law, like they shouldn't have it, you know. Mm -hmm. So because we wanted work and because you're desperate for money, you know, uh, my cousin brought the passport, but I was never allowed to see her. Her boss then seized her mobile phone and started abusing her physically. Lavenda would barely sleep as the work was too much. And at other times, she would not be given enough food despite the amount of work she had without rest. I can't communicate to my cousin. They're trying to call. My cousin tried to call several times, but she's like, no, she's okay. She doesn't want to talk to anyone and all that. On the other hand, her boss's husband also started making advances at her, touching her inappropriately and buying her silence with some money. She would take the money because at the back of her mind, she planned an escape and this money would come in handy. One day, her boss wanted to use a knife against her. Lavenda tried to escape several times, but she was under surveillance. I was beaten again, like, why are you trying to run away? Why? Like, you are a slave, you have to serve us. We have your passport, we have your phone. That is the moment she gave her cousin a distress call, that if the cousin does not come and pick her from the house, she might never hear from her ever again. The Kenyan embassy tried to intervene, but still, the family would not let her go. So uh, remember I told you the agent that took me to this uh, work, uh, he worked in a Catholic and this family was a Christian basically, yeah. So the, they are Christians, we have Christians in Egypt. So that's when they had to contact the father of the church and the father demanded a video call. Mm -hmm. So again, they started beating. I remember that day she called me up in the villa and uh, she gave me one slap like it it swelled a lot and i was crying yeah that day i was so bitter and then uh, i started thinking a lot at that time i was still in the world and i didn't know I, I kept telling god you don't exist because if you exist why would i go through such thing you know she kept lying that she is okay when inquiries of her welfare were done however finally the family let her go she got into another house and she was well received by a divorced woman after six months she got married and they moved to a bigger house with her new husband. We are, we've shifted to a higher place, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you have to expect higher salary and all that, yeah. So uh, God blessed her with two beautiful twins. 
yeah she gave birth and that's when she had to employ more staff mm -hmm. yeah to take care of the twins so we were three nannies in the house okay yeah and there are, there were other egyptians who were still working around because the house was very big mm -hmm. mm. lavender's job and relationship with her boss was okay at the beginning even giving her empty promises like taking her back to school this lady was a very busy online influencer a point to keep in mind as we progress after two years the lady started to change first she accused lavender of stealing her designer handbag lavender went for vacation and never came back to the house the lady however kept calling her back so uh, i gave it a thought because still she opted for a higher salary mm -hmm. it's not because of the salary okay i went to egypt to look for capital that's true but uh, you can't compare capital with your life so uh she told me that the boy is very bad like miserable the, the grades have gone down the boy keeps calling my name please just come out of that empathy because i loved him so much i i, I told him i told the madam one thing if you want me to come back to your house remember to you i left as a thief because you accused me i want you to correct that if you want me to come back to that house you have to correct what you started and she's like okay i know you didn't take it mm -hmm. yeah she told me i know you didn't take it and i know who took the bag and i'm sorry because i accused you and because of that i'll make amends and i'll increase your salary okay yeah so i was happy because that was the ticket for me that to go a back good deal. yeah it was a good deal mm -hmm. In December 2023, she gave in to the lady's requests. Her work was to serve the man of the house with food. But the lady of the house had a weird behavior. She would treat the soup of the man of the house with some pounded drugs. So they trusted me with Mr's food a lot. Yeah, so I would serve breakfast and I would serve dinner for this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, something weird used to happen because uh, there are times that uh, it's not once, it's not twice that the madam did this. Uh, she would just come to the kitchen and there's this, uh, I don't know how to call it in English, kino, you know, the one you, you put something like maybe garlic, no, na swaga. Uh, you know, peso and mortar. Peso and mortar, yeah, yes. thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, she had three types of drug that she would, she would mix in this peso and mortar and then send me with the food and take it to the guy. After taking the soup, the guy would sleep for about three to four hours continuously. She used to do that and take Mr's visa. Mr had this golden visa. Yeah, I, I heard that if you have it, you're very rich. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that though. But she used to take it, send the driver quickly, withdraw money, and she'd stay in the room. I think, to my thinking, I think she was like clearing the evidence because she would stay where Mr, beside Mr. Because I, I used to ask myself, if someone withdraws money, Obviously, you will you find a message, notification on yeah, your notification. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. would just wake up, okay. The situation was so bad that Lavender wanted to quit. She was a very prayerful lady, and she kept praying for her safety. She was later accused of stealing her boss's wedding ring. A psychic was even called to establish the thief amongst the servants. The psychic picked Lavender. She, was, uh, she came uh, close to where I was, and she's like, you know, if we don't find this ring, blood has to shed. She repeated the statement thrice. If we don't find this ring, blood has to shed. If we don't find the ring, blood has to shed. If we don't find the ring, blood has to shed. So I was like, okay. I don't know whose blood is going to shed anyways, but I have to look for the ring, mm -hmm. you know. They insisted that she is the thief of the ring and was undressed as she was hatched on her naked body. Lavender was taken through some unpleasant ordeal by some two men who had been called to teach her a lesson. They hated me so much, so much that I couldn't even speak. Uh, I laid on the floor after they hit me and uh, they kept telling me, give us the ring, give us the ring. So I didn't even have that voice of talking to them. At, in every situation I was going through, I kept praying. They never had me speak or doing anything, but I kept praying inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept telling God, I know you know, you have a purpose why I'm going through all this. Ultimately, Lavender was then thrown into jail for a crime that was not proven. At the jail, she was discriminated against and taunted by the guards. She would go for days without food and would go on her men's days without sanitary towels. 
and uh, I won't deny the fact that God has been there for me. Yes. At times I'll just hear voices, you know, but I might say this, someone might take it as a joke, but God is real. Because I remember this day when I was sick, I didn't eat for two days. I was so weak. I had to crawl to the to the toilet. It was very dirty because we, we, we share it, you know, you have many people. So I had to crawl and go drink the water. The cistern, the toilet, yeah, toilet yeah. water, the one that used to flush. Yeah, you know, they're Muslims, so you know when they go to the toilet, this is what they mm-hmm, use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to drink it and then crawl back to the floor and sleep. However, despite all that, a kind officer helped her to get in touch with a Kenyan official at the embassy who helped her to come back to Kenya. Right now, all Lavender wants mm-hmm. is some time to unwind and find a footing after going such an ordeal in a foreign country. And that is Lavender's story. My name is King Oriwangeshi. Thank you for watching.